Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, some of you know this uh, soldering stand that I have. Bought this on Amazon not too long ago. Actually, maybe quite a quite a while now. And it's quite useful. Uh, it works very well. You just you know sort of tighten up these screws, and you can flip this around. You can even tighten up the screws so it doesn't flip at all like that. It's pretty good. Um, but a while ago, a Patreon of mine had sent me these things. Uh, these are lock line, so they're kind of like this uh, flexible coolant hose that machinists use and stuff like that. But they can also be used as flexible little arms, and his intention was for me to mount them somewhere and put little uh, cl clamps at the end here and have it hold parts, you know, sort of you know, like that, hold a part on the board while you solder it. Well, uh, I needed to sort of 3D model uh, something to uh, hook it up, and I've finally gotten around to it, and I have these. Uh, so the white ones are printed on a uh, secret printer I got for review. Uh, the clear ones are on my old printer here. So. Uh, there's actually two revisions. There's these really thin walled ones and these little bit thicker walled ones and the, the deal is that These things here they have little feet and you just slide this over like that And I made them narrow enough so that you can actually fit a couple You know over the same leg and then these things would go Sort of in there and you can glue them in or I was planning on just putting a dab of hot glue but some of them uh, the tolerances weren't so great on one of my printers, so some of these are actually tight so you can thread them in. Not sure which way I prefer, but anyways. The 3D model will be available in the description below, but I figured I would take you along on this journey of uh, making this work. Um, so the first thing you're going to need is these lock line lines. I, I don't know if these are quarter inch or three eight inch. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Um, this uh, this diameter here is about 12 millimeters. I know that much. Uh, then you're going to need some of these clamps. So we're going to need four of these. I think I have uh, one out already. So you need some of these clamps. You get them on eBay, AliExpress. I'll put some affiliate links in the description where you get all these parts and uh, the actual device here. And then my plan is to remove the end here and sort of shove this up the clacker like that, pour some epoxy in there, and then let that set, and then put it back on. But these things are a little bit hard to separate, so let me give you a trick for that first. So the trick I found to taking these off is if you have a soldering station, you can do this with a um, hot air gun or a hair dryer, but I have my soldering reflow station here with no tip, you can see, just bare, and it's at 100 degrees, as cold as it gets, basically. And then you just heat this up. And the goal is not to heat it up to melt it, just to heat it up to get it more flexible. So we're going to do this here. And it doesn't take much. And you do have to concentrate the heat kind of around the, the bulb section of here. I'm just going to touch it every once in a while, make sure it doesn't get too hot. Just kind of like a medium airflow and 100 degrees Celsius. Hopefully I get this in the first try. And then you just bend it until it pops off. And trust me, I have tried Without using the heat gun, it's not worth it. This is so much easier. Oh, see, not quite hot enough. Oh, might get it. Ah, oh. see. The hotter, the better. This is like barely warm right now. All right, let's move on to the next step. 
So the next step is we got to get these things to fit inside of these things. Um, they have these little sort of wire crimps on them, or sort of crimps to hold the insulation of wires. I'm just going to flip them down, but not all the way, because I kind of want them to grab onto the epoxy so that it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't pull out. So just going to put it in so it fits like this. And then my plan is I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue here and here to kind of lock this in place and try to make sure that when we pour the epoxy in from this side, it doesn't run out and go all over the clamp. Now, there's no guarantees that it won't run out, but this is what I'm doing. You can put like plasticine or a uh, sticky tack or something in there, but uh, I like hot glue, so that's going to be that. And then uh, I've got this box here, normal box. I punch some holes in, and then these will sit in here and we can leave them there until the epoxy cures. For the epoxy, nothing special, just uh, Dollarama stuff that I've had, or dollar store stuff, I should say, that I've had uh, laying around for quite a few years now. Hopefully it's still good, but one way to find out. So basically that, into a little shot glass, mix it up with a little uh, wooden dowel or a popsicle stick, and then just basically gonna pour it in here with the uh, these things stuck in and into the box. Let's see if I can get this on camera for you. So basically I've got my um, got my thing in there. I'm just going to put a tiny little bead of hot glue. Now the hot glue is not there to secure, it's just there to stop the epoxy running out. I mean it might still run out but it is what it is. Set that off to the side. And do another. Let's see if I can do the epoxy part without uh, causing havoc. Well, it's not starting well when you can't pull off the cap. Hmm. I don't know if it'll pour, but here it goes. Probably just going to use up the rest of this epoxy, but to be honest, it's not going to be the whole thing that's going to be used. All right, now the deal with epoxy is that you mix it until you're sure it's thoroughly mixed and then you mix it some more. And then I'm going to pour it into the tops there, but you'll have to be careful because we don't want any epoxy on the rounded edges, although I think it might just flake off. So we'll see. I'm trying to get all the the sides out too. So I think that's enough, so I'm going to go a little bit more. You also don't have too much. I think this skins over in like two minutes, so don't don't go too slowly. Yeah, the worse the mix is, the more uh, inconsistent the drawing will be. So here we go. Shove that in there. And I got it all over the rounded part, so we're going to have to see if we can fix that after. That's way too much. It is running down though. Let me see if I can yank some out of this one. There we go. That should be creating some heat now. This one here I worry about. I don't think it'll clip back in. Might have to try to extract some more. If I've ruined them, I've ruined them. I don't really... It is what it is. I mean, I can always go in with a Dremel and uh, chop some out.
Okay, and then what you do now with the cup is you just put it aside and you know when your epoxy is cured because your cup will be cured. Just be careful not to uh, put this on uh, meltable surfaces because it does get hot. It's uh, exothermic. I think I got a little bit too much in this one too. Just gonna pull a bit out. All right, and uh, hopefully it doesn't melt the crap out of the uh, out of these tips. So now we just gotta be patient. Okay, so all done. Um, I didn't actually have to clean any of the epoxy off of this. All I did was uh, I had to heat up uh, two out of four to get them back on, but they do move perfectly fine at the moment. Hopefully the epoxy set in there. I could take off this uh, hot glue, but there's really no point. I don't think there's a reason for it. So I'll just leave it as is. So now I've just selected four of the 3D prints. The one with the thicker legs here, those are the ones that are gonna be available um, in the description. Now this is not necessary, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of insurance by putting just a dab of hot glue in there. Again, they fit kind of tightly, uh, some of them. Depends on your printer's settings. Um, one of my printers printed it really well, the other one not so much. Or, I don't know, they're, they're, they all printed well, it's just that it's uh, slightly different measurements, I guess. But uh, hot glue is my favorite temporary solution, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of threading it in there getting the hot glue to go all around and hopefully it'll stick it down. This can all be done in real time too because it's pretty quick. There we go, and the last one here. This one, yeah, need to be adjusted a bit, but that's okay. Again, none of this is permanent. Hot glue can always be undone. The uh, This thing is stuck in there pretty permanently, but at the same time, uh, you can just you know, snip that off and 3D print another another thing. So there they are. Here's my board, and this should slide right on there. And then yeah, there we go. I can set it up to, you know, hang on to a part right there if I want. Same thing here. I can put two on the same leg designed it specifically to be able to do that. Oh, I can put three on the same leg if I want to. Look at me. All right, you can hold parts, hold parts, and hold parts. So there we go. Uh, you can get your very own parts holder. All you need is a little bit of lock line. Buy these things on Amazon or uh, AliExpress. They're very inexpensive. And uh, the little uh, base holder here that the link is in the video description. So. Thanks again to the mystery uh, Patreon who sent me these in a mailbag a long time ago. Project is successful. Oh, and by the way, you can also uh, melt some heat shrink onto the jaws if you want it to be a little softer. I might do that to about half of them. Thanks for watching.